Welcome to the flock. Let's dive into some complex stoichiometric calculations using molarity. This first one is solving for how many grams can be produced using molarity as one of our conversion factors. Now, why did I include a launching space shuttle here? That's because this chemical equation happens to be the one used, lithium hydroxide crystals, in reverse for astronauts that need to take CO2 out of the air so they don't suffocate and die in outer space. So if I had 250 liters of a three molar solution of lithium carbonate, that's this guy right here, and it's reacted with liquid water, we wanna know how many grams of this lithium hydroxide could be created. As with any stoichiometric problem, we're gonna draw our magical line to freedom. Leave a space for our answer, and our goal is grams of lithium hydroxide. This is where a lot of students get confused. There are two givens here, and they're never really sure which one to put as the first on the line. Really, you could start with either of those values as your given, or the first thing on your line. However, it's easiest to start with the value that only has one unit associated with it. The 250 liters only has one unit, whereas this M here stands for moles per liter. That has two units associated with it, and that's always a more challenging way to start. So we're gonna start this dimensional analysis problem using 250 liters as the first thing on our line. And now that's not 250 liters of urine, it's not 250 liters of alcohol, it is 250 liters of lithium carbonate. So we need to make sure that we label that as well. Well, how does that 3M or the three moles per one liter come into play now? It's useful in getting rid of this liter unit right there. Notice that we're growing from liters to grams. So we have to cancel out the liters. And the only way we can do that is by using our molarity as a conversion factor. So we're going to plug in three moles per one liter. That's the concentration or the molarity of the lithium carbonate solution. Notice that I did not just say 3M in my dimensional analysis because that doesn't help us with anything. We need to see that the liters can cancel. So we need to write out moles over liter. Now we see that our liters cancels and we're left with moles. We still need to get from moles of lithium carbonate to grams of lithium hydroxide. That's a different chemical. Anytime you see two different chemicals, you know that you're going to need to use a mole ratio to convert between chemicals. And we find the mole ratio value by looking back at our balanced chemical equation. For every one lithium carbonate, we have two lithium hydroxides in terms of moles, that first value in front. The goal mole goes on top, so that would be two moles of lithium hydroxide since that's our goal unit. And the one mole, the invisible one that's implied in front of the lithium carbonate, will go in the bottom. Now we see that the moles of lithium carbonate cancel, and we're finally left with the correct chemical, but not the correct unit yet. In order to get from moles to grams, we have to use molar mass. Molar mass of what? Lithium hydroxide, of course, that's our goal. We need to look to our periodic table for the masses of each atom present in lithium hydroxide. Every lithium atom weighs 6.9 grams, each oxygen weighs 16, and each hydrogen weighs 1.008. So we have a molar mass for lithium hydroxide of 23.908 grams of LiOH for every one mole of LiOH. My moles of lithium hydroxide cancel and I'm finally left with my goal units, so now all I have to do is plug and chug into my calculator. We have 250 times three times two times 23.908, all divided by one for a grand total of 35,862 grams of lithium hydroxide. That's how many grams of lithium hydroxide would be produced if we took liquid water and mixed it with 250 liters of a three molar solution of lithium carbonate. Let's try molarity with limiting reactants next. Given the following equation between baking soda and acetic acid, i.e. vinegar, we're going to try and solve how many grams of water are produced. We have 30 milliliters of a 1.2 molar or moles per liter solution of baking soda, and we have 40 milliliters of a 1.5 molar moles per liter solution of vinegar as our two reactants. Just as with any limiting reactant problem, we're always gonna need two lines to freedom. Here our goal is grams of water. 
Just as we did in the previous question, we're gonna start with the volume amount instead of the molarity amount, just because that has a single unit associated with it, making it easier to calculate and set up. Notice that we're beginning with milliliters this time. Anytime we're dealing with molarity, we know it's in moles per liter. So anytime you see milliliters, it should be a dead giveaway that you're gonna need to convert the milliliters to liters first. We know that there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. Now that we see that the milliliters cancel in both instances, we're still left with liters. How do we get rid of that liters value? This is where the molarity comes into play. Remember that that giant M stands for moles per one liter. So instead of saying big M, we're saying 1.5 moles in one liter or 1.2 moles in one liter, if we're talking about the baking soda. Let's use that as our next conversion. So 1.2 moles for one liter. That'll now get rid of that liter unit and get us one step closer to grams. And for the vinegar, we had a molarity or a concentration of 1.5 molar or moles per one liter for the vinegar, CH3. COOH. Now in both cases we see that the liters cancels and we're left with moles of our given reactant. We're still trying to get to grams of a product. So we need to convert a chemical to a different chemical using a mole ratio of course. Looking back at our balanced equation we see that this is an entirely one to one to one to one balanced equation. Everything is just one to one. So here we would plug in one mole of our water is equivalent to one mole of our baking soda. And one mole of our water is equivalent to one mole of acetic acid, according to our balanced equation. The moles cancel here, and we're finally left with the right chemical, but not the right units. We still need the molar mass of water to get from moles to grams. Looking at our periodic table, we see that each oxygen weighs 16 and each hydrogen weighs 1.008 and there happens to be two of those. So we're going to add those two values together for around a value of 18 grams of water for every mole of water for water's molar mass. That's going to be the same for the top and the bottom setup. The moles of water cancels in both setups, and we are left with grams of water, which was our goal. So now we can just plug into our calculate, multiply all across the top, multiply the bottom, divide numerator and denominator for a final answer of 0 0.648 grams of water from the perspective of the baking soda, or 1.08 grams of water from the perspective of the acetic acid, the vinegar. When we compare these two values, since we're still trying to figure out the limiting reactant, we're going to pick the one that makes less. So in this case, the one that makes less is our baking soda. That happens to be our limiting reactant. Therefore, by process of elimination, we can assume that the acetic acid or the vinegar is the excess reactant. And to answer the final question then, the maximum amount of water that could be produced since the limiting reactant gets completely used up would be the 0.648 grams of water, the lesser amount. In this practice problem, we're solving for a value of milliliters or volume using molarity as a conversion factor. It's saying, hey, we want 50 grams of this product, magnesium chloride, and we wanna know, well, how many milliliters of hydrochloric acid would I need at 0.75 molar or molarity concentration in order to create 50 grams of magnesium chloride? This certainly sounds like a stoichiometric setup, so let's draw our magical line to freedom. The goal here happens to be milliliters. Milliliters of what? Milliliters of HCl. My given is 50 grams of magnesium chloride. That's how much I want to make. So 50 grams of magnesium chloride will be the first thing on my line. This one seems rather tricky, doesn't it? Well, we know automatically that we're starting with grams of one chemical that is going to a volume of a different chemical. Since there's two different chemicals, we know we're gonna have to use mole ratios at some point in this problem. In order to use a mole ratio, I need to have a mole to begin with, to cancel. So grams needs to get to moles. And the way I do that is by using molar mass. Let's find the molar mass of magnesium chloride. Looking to your periodic table, you should see that magnesium per atom of magnesium weighs 24.305. And each chlorine happens to weigh 35.45, and there's two of those in magnesium chloride. So our molar mass of magnesium chloride is 95.205 grams per mole. 
Now I need to get rid of that moles of magnesium chloride and get to moles of HCl. Looking back at my balanced chemical equation, I can determine the mole ratio. There are two HCLs for every one, there's an invisible one there, of magnesium chloride. The goal mole will go on top. So two moles of HCl goes on top and one mole of MgCl2 goes on the bottom. My moles will cancel and I'm left with moles of HCl. I still need to get to milliliters. Well, lucky for us, we have this conversion factor that has both moles and liters in it. That's called molarity. Oh, no. So molarity, this big M, is really 0.75 moles per liter. It looks like I could use that to get rid of the moles of HCl. All I have to do is flip this domino around. So we'll have 0.75 moles on the bottom per one liter on top. I can do this because this is the concentration specifically of HCl, which is our goal unit. Now my moles of HCl will cancel and I'm left with liters. I still need to get to milliliters. One more step, we can do this. We know that there are 1000 milliliters in one liter. Now I'm finally left with the correct units and the correct chemical and my liters cancel here. The last step is the easiest. We just take our 50, multiply by one, multiply by two, multiply by one, multiply by a thousand, and divide that all by 95.205 times one times 0 0.75 times one. And we get a final answer of 1,400.48 milliliters of HCl. So if you had 1,400.48 milliliters of 0.75 molar HCl, plus a certain amount of magnesium hydroxide that's inconsequential at the moment, you could hypothetically produce 50 grams of magnesium chloride. What if you need to know how many grams you need for a specific molarity? In this question, it's asking how many grams of calcium hydroxide would be needed to make 100 milliliters of a 0.25 molar solution? As any other time, we're gonna need our magical line to freedom. And here, our goal is grams of calcium hydroxide. Since we're given both of these, and again, that's kind of confusing as to which ones to start with, we're gonna start with the one that only has one unit associated with it, the 100 milliliters. Let's put that as our given on the top of the line. We also know that 0 0.250 big M stands for, technically, 0 0.25 moles per one liter. And that's the way we need to write it for our dimensional analysis. Liter here is not gonna cancel with milliliter here. So we need to convert the milliliter first before we can apply our molarity conversion factor. There are 1000 milliliters in one liter. Now we have a liter unit on the top we can get rid of by plugging in our molarity conversion factor. So let's put our 0 0.25 moles in one liter on the line. And notice that our liters now cancel and we're left with moles of calcium hydroxide. We still need grams. In order to get from moles to grams, we use our molar mass. Looking to our periodic table, we can find the masses of each piece in calcium hydroxide and then plug that in next. Each calcium atom weighs 40 grams. Each oxygen atom weighs 16 and there's two of them. And each hydrogen atom weighs 1.008 and there's also two of those since it's still within the parentheses. So our molar mass is 74.016 grams of calcium hydroxide for every mole of calcium hydroxide. My moles cancel and I'm left with grams of calcium hydroxide. So we know we did it right, we can plug and chug into our calculator. 100 times one times 0 0.25 times 74.016 all divided by 1000 times one times one, which is just 1000. You should have gotten a value of 1.85 grams of calcium hydroxide. So if I took 100 milliliters in a beaker and I weighed out 1.85 grams of calcium hydroxide on a scale and then mixed those two together, we would have a 0.25 molar solution of calcium hydroxide. This kind of calculation is probably most applicable to anyone taking a lab course where you have to make your own solution. What if we need to calculate how many moles of something are in a specific molarity of a solution? Let's say we want to know how many moles of salt are contained in 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar or 0.2 moles per one liter solution of salt water. 
All we're going to have to do is set up our line as usual with our goal being moles of NaCl and putting our first given as the 100 milliliters. Just as before, anytime we're dealing with molarity, we need units in liters. So let's get rid of those milliliters first. There are 1000 milliliters in one liter. And now we can use our 0.2 moles per one liter conversion factor in our dimensional analysis. Let's make sure everything cancels that needs to cancel. Milliliters here, liters here. Am I left with moles? I totally am. So I can just plug and chug into the calculator now. We have 100 times 1 times 0 0.2 divided by 1,000 times 1. For a final answer of 0 0.02 moles of NaCl. Wahoo! And finally, of course, what if we need to figure out the molarity of a solution in general? So let's say we have 25 grams of sucrose sugar and we dissolve those 25 grams of sugar in 50 milliliters of water. We want to know what the concentration is of that solution. What's the molarity? We know that molarity is moles per liter. Here we have a value of milliliters and a value of grams. We need to convert our grams to moles and our milliliters to liters in order to plug this into our molarity ratio. So first let's convert the grams to moles of sugar. We have 25 grams of sucrose, C12H22O11. In order to get from grams to moles, we need our periodic table. Each carbon weighs 12.011 and there's 12 of those atoms present. Each hydrogen weighs 1.008 and there are 22 of those present. And each oxygen weighs 16 and there are 11 of those present. Our molar mass is 342.308 grams of sucrose for every mole of sucrose. My grams cancel, I'm left with moles. Time to just divide 25 by 342.308 for an answer of 0.073 moles of sucrose. I now have the numerator for my molarity ratio. I need to figure out the denominator. I have 50 milliliters currently, but that doesn't match units of liters. I know that there are a thousand milliliters in a liter, so I can just move the decimal for 50 milliliters back three. So I'm just going to take my decimal here and go one, two, three, plug in that zero, and I now have 0 0.05 liters present. Now I have my denominator to plug into my molarity division problem. Dividing 0 0.073 for the mole value I found by 0 0.05 liters, I get a molarity or a concentration of 1.46 moles per one liter of sugar water. Or another way to write that is 1.46 big M molar sucrose solution. As a recap for today's practice questions, we learned how to find limiting reactants with molarity. We learned how to find molarity. We learned how to find a volume if given a certain molarity. We learned how to find grams if given a certain molarity. And we learned how to find moles if given a certain molarity. These should be the primary setups you may encounter for any molarity as a conversion factor stoichiometry you may encounter. Please give this video a quacks up and subscribe to DaConta for some more ducky content. No ducks, no glory.